now let us look at a few examples of a relation assume we have a set a which is containing 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 and this is set b which is also containing 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 now what is a cross b then a cross b is going to contain 16 elements because it is containing 4 elements it is containing 4 elements so a cross b is going to contain 4 into 4 that means 16 elements so what are the elements this it is 1 comma 1 1 comma 2 1 comma 3 1 comma 4 2 comma 1 2 comma 2 2 comma 3 2 comma 4 3 comma 1 3 comma 2 3 comma 3 3 comma 4 4 comma 1 4 comma 2 4 comma 3 and 4 comma 4 now if i define the relationship relation over a comma a cross b then obviously i am saying that for example this is a relation r1 this is a relation r1 right and this relation r1 will always be defined over a comma a cross b right so we can say even if there is any relation over any set that will always be a subset of cross product even if we define a relation r1 then a relation r1 will be a subset of a cross b assume i can denote relation r1 that relation r1 is going to contain the element which is x comma y such that x comma y belongs to a cross b and and y divides f y divides x and y divides x so that means in this relation a cross b what are the equations where y is dividing x for example here 1 is dividing 1 so 1 comma 1 will be in the relation again here 1 is dividing 2 so 2 comma 1 will be in the relation here 2 is dividing 2 therefore 2 comma 2 will be in the relation here again 1 is dividing 3 so 3 comma 1 will be in the relation again 3 is dividing 3 therefore 3 comma 3 will be in the relation again 1 is dividing 4 therefore 4 comma 1 be in the relation 1 2 is dividing 4 therefore 4 comma 2 be in the relation again 4 is dividing 4 therefore 4 comma 4 will be in the relation right so what are the how many elements are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 there are 8 elements so whenever we are defining a relation that relation will always be a subset of this cross product and this relation is going to satisfy some kind of constraint or some kind of condition for example i can also define a relation r2 like this over this set a cross b i can also define a relation r2 like this that means r2 is going to contain elements which are x comma y such that x comma y belong to the ordered pair a cross b right right and and x minus y is equal to 0 and x minus y is equal to 0 so what are the uh, items where x minus y is equal to 0 1 minus 1 is 0 2 minus 2 is 0 3 minus 3 is 0 4 minus 4 is 0 so it is going to contain the elements which is 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 3 comma 3 and 4 comma 4 these are the elements we are following the above condition so this is a relation r2 in the same way we can have a relation r3 like this relation r3 can be x comma y such that such that x mod y is equal to 2 mod 0 2 mod 2 or you can say we can also define it like this x comma y x mod y is equal to 0 and x comma y should belong to the cross product a cross b right so what is modulus if you do divide x by y then the remainder should be zero that is modulus so here in this case the relation r3 is going to contain the elements which are if i do if i do 1 mod 1 then 1 mod 1 is zero because remainder is zero if i do 2 mod 1 then it is the remainder is 0 if you divide 2 by 1 then the remainder is 0 if I divide again see this is this relation and this relation both are actually the same thing if you check it let me let me give an example 
it is 2 mod 1 here if you divide 2 by 1 then the remainder is 0 if you divide 3 by 1 then the remainder is 0 if you divide 4 by 1 then the remainder is 0 again if you divide 2 by 2 then the remainder is 0 if you divide 3 by 3 then the remainder is 0 if you divide 4 by 4 then the remainder is 0 if you divide 4 by 2 then the remainder is 0 as you can see these and these elements are exactly the same so this relation we are doing x mod y is equal to 0 and this relation is x comma y where y divides x both are exactly the same now we can also define the relation r4 like this assume relation r4 is x comma y are the elements such that such that x minus y x minus y is going to follow some condition like x minus y is a positive integer is a positive integer and and x comma y belong to a cross b and x comma y belong to a cross b so uh, if i do 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 is 0 that is a positive integer so this 1 comma 1 relation will be there if i do 1 minus 2 that means i will get a negative number if i do 1 minus 3 i will get a negative number if i do 1 minus 4 i will get a negative number if i do 2 minus 1 then i will get a positive number if I do 2 minus 2 then I will get a positive integer number. If I do 2 minus 3 I will get a negative integer number. If I get 2 minus 4 I will get a negative integer number. Again if I do 3 minus 1 then I will get a positive integer number. If I do 3 minus 2 then I will get a positive integer number. If I get minus 3 minus 3 then I will get a positive integer number. In the same way if I do 4 minus 1 then I'll get a positive integer. 4 minus 2, I'll get a positive integer. 4 minus 3, I'll get a positive integer. 4 minus 4, I'll get a positive integer. Right. So when I'm defining a relation like this, when I'm defining a relation like this, that means it is relation is always a subset of a cross product, and this subset is going to follow some kind of conditions. And we are going to specify these kind of conditions. For example, in the case of DBMS, we already discussed that example. In case of DBMS, if you take a set of row numbers, maybe that set of row numbers is a set of uh, integer numbers. If you take a set of names and we take cross product between the set of row numbers and the set of names. Now out of these row numbers and the names, there will be some row numbers which are valid. There will be some row numbers which are not valid. So we have to take the row numbers which are valid. And out of those valid row numbers, we can define the relation. Right. So this is a very simple example of a relation. Now well, let us look at what are the different types of relations which we can have. We can have a reflexive relation. We can have an irreflexive relation. We can, we can have a symmetric relation. We have a, ir uh, a symmetric relation. We have an anti-symmetric relation and so on. So let us look at what are the different kinds of relations which we can have.